Welcome to Super Fast Soup Express. What can I get for you today? Uh, I'll have the soup, please. Uh, um, by the way, do you take Bitcoin? Of course, sir. Just scan here. Great. Thanks. I sent it. It's been like 15 minutes. Waiter! Waiter, how's that soup coming along? Oh, it's all good, sir. We already have two confirmations on the blockchain. We here at Super Fast Soup Express have a six confirmation policy, but it shouldn't be much longer. Hey, come on, I have a plane to catch back to Canada. I don't have all day here. Four confirmations now, sir. It shouldn't be much longer. <sighs> Ooh, a new Crypto Lark video. Canadian credit cards will now be checked for cannabis purchases. Ah, bloody hell. I knew I should have paid for those brownies using cash. Waiter, wait, waiter, where's that soup at? Just one more confirmation, sir. Ah, oh, I wish I would have saved one of those brownies. Welcome everyone to this October 8th edition of What's Happening in Crypto with me, your host, The Crypto Lark, broadcasting to you from New Zealand and bringing you all of the latest from the crypto world and beyond. Today's top stories, why your restaurant should be accepting Bitcoin, ICOs coming to the Bitcoin blockchain, the Elastos TV, and the dreams of Canadian potheads of revisiting the United States may be going up in smoke. A massive thank you to the sponsor of today's episode, Liquid.com, the most secure exchange in crypto, designed to make trading easy for beginners and pros alike. Massive liquidity for fiat pairs, little to no fees for fiat deposits. Liquid also provides margin trading with up to 25x leverage and margin lending, so you can earn interest on your Bitcoin. They also host an ICO investment platform to be used with fiat, and you'll get a whopping 50% discount on your trading fees when you use the cash token. But wait, there is more. Sign up using the link down below and you'll get a $10 airdrop of cash tokens by verifying your account and placing a trade of over $100. The first big story of the day, the most influential endowment manager has just jumped into crypto with bets on two Silicon Valley funds. Now, this in particular is about the Yale Fund. It is nearly a $30 billion endowment, and they have invested in two funds dedicated to cryptocurrencies. Now, don't get too excited. They're not investing $30 billion into crypto. No, it's, of course, a much, much smaller amount than that. But it is very interesting to see that they are branching out, getting a little more adventurous, we might say, with some of their investments. And a lot of people gave this story a lot of attention because it is interesting that such a big fund like this is giving cryptocurrency a little bit of a nod of approval here by actually being willing to invest in some of those funds. And of course, a lot of these funds can only go up from here. Pantera's digital asset fund is down 72% in 2018. Bitcoin, of course, uh, has fared better. Had they just bought Bitcoin, they would have been doing better than having a diversified portfolio. Now, this story, the reason I bring it up is not to say, ha look at how bad Pantera is doing. No, actually, it's to reinforce, I think, to everyone, if you want to be as successful as the big guys in the long run and the big guys, the little guys, everyone's, no one's immune to the market. But if you want to be successful like the big guys in the long run, this last sentence here I think is really, really important. Pantera, Galaxy Digital, among other funds, they're not selling, they're accumulating. They're spending this time in the market acquiring more assets. I think that speaks volumes about the mentality between professionals like this and a lot of retail investors who get scared at the first sign of trouble. How restaurants could help Bitcoin grow and why it might be an interesting idea if you're a restaurant owner to be accepting Bitcoin. 
Attracting like-minded clientele. Well, that's kind of a nice uh, sounding one overall. You get a bunch of Bitcoin enthusiasts coming and hanging out at your cafe. But I think that is actually a very interesting idea because if you put up a sign that says Bitcoin accepted here, you really might get some more people coming in that are Bitcoin enthusiasts. They might start talking to each other, having regular meetups, coming and purchasing more things at your cafe because they know that other people like that go there. As that acceptance grows, that may not be so much of a realistic thing because it'll be simply accepted everywhere. But if you are a restaurant owner, you'll also, of course, be helping usage. So everybody says, well, when mainstream adoption? Well, if you are a restaurant owner, what are you doing to help mainstream adoption? If you are a restaurant patron or a cafe patron, have you ever thought about asking the manager or asking the owner are you planning on accepting Bitcoin? Why not? Here's some ideas. I can help you do this, or I can at least point you in the right direction of some payment services. For example, get them a PundiX terminal, or tell them about PundiX, or tell them about many of the other services that could help them accept cryptocurrencies. I feel like there's a lot of businesses out there who do want to do this, but don't know how. And of course, online sales, as we see the explosion of uh, delivery services happening at the moment, being able to use cryptocurrencies to pay is, of course, a good idea. And you do have to keep in mind, too, that the credit cards that a lot of people use to pay for food and restaurants also take a big percentage from the restaurant owners. Now, there's a lot of different services that are starting to work in terms of restaurants and getting people to use cryptocurrencies to pay for their food. We have these guys bit refill, letting US customers pay for Burger King with Bitcoin. Now we did have the Russian Whopper coin that came out uh, last year, or maybe it was earlier this year, but ah, uh, Burger King. Anyway, besides the point, it's an interesting idea, but they're really focusing on the big chains. Now this is actually about getting a voucher that you can then go and use for dining in any of these uh, you know, so-called restaurants, places like Domino's and Burger King, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, Cheesecake Factory, Chipotle, among others. But it's an interesting step because those chains are massive. And so letting people have this little step, obviously I would prefer just to see Burger King taking Bitcoin, but we're not quite there yet with some of those big chains. We even see restaurants launching their own coins. Of course, accepting cryptocurrencies is fantastic, but what if you have your own coin at your restaurant? You could give it to people as a rewards program, for example, issue your own ERC-20 token. People can put it in their wallets and get a discount next time they come in by paying in that coin, for example. And of course, in spite of my, uh, my funny skit at the start here, the Lightning Network is growing on Bitcoin all the time, and it's actually gonna make small purchases much more palatable. Imagine if you just want to buy one coffee or one croissant or something like that at a restaurant. Paying a big transaction fee may not be so uh, easy to deal with, I suppose, in terms of having that extra cost on top. If you think of it every time you go and get your one euro coffee every day and who wants to deal with that? You probably can't even uh, pay for a credit card on such a transaction. So seeing the Bitcoin Lightning Network enable these small and of course high speed transactions will be an important part of this equation. Also, it's the rise of Bitcoin payments. We've actually seen recently hackers demanding a Bitcoin ransom in cyber attack on big Canadian restaurants. Now look, Recipe Limited, the, one of the restaurants that was targeted as saying, there is no ransom threat, its systems are secure. Maybe that's the case, but this is growing. And I think if these people know that, well, that restaurants got Bitcoin, I know they do, maybe I'll try and attack their systems and then they can pay me in that Bitcoin, but you can't stop that. This is fraud on the internet is as old as the internet. It's not gonna go away. Malware is not gonna go away. Ransomware is not gonna go away. This is just a new iteration of a continuing story. Sidechains are bringing ICOs to Bitcoin. 
and that might change crypto funding. Well, yeah, it would definitely change crypto funding without a doubt. Now, this is not a new idea. They have not just come up with this overnight. The original concept of an ICO was first started on the Bitcoin blockchain itself back in 2013, though with comparatively limited blockchain infrastructure to that of Ethereum today. Now, in particular, they're going to be using Rootstock. So we're going to see a South Korean company called Temco using Rootstock to launch a public token in November. So this is coming sooner than you think it's going to be happening. And it's really interesting. Obviously, with the number of transactions per second on Bitcoin currently, it's not the best. It's not the best. I can't imagine right now. Um, big ICOs or lots of ICOs happening on the Bitcoin blockchain. It will become a mess very, very quickly. But on a side chain, hmm, then we start to get into an interesting conversation here. So to see this actually being pulled off is going to be pretty cool because it will shake up again the way that ICO funding has been happening outside of just accepting Bitcoin can actually be launching an ICO on well, I guess the side chain to Bitcoin. The guys over at Crypto.com are shipping out their Visa debit card. 100,000 of them going out in the next two months. Around the same time, actually, that 10X is planning their card deployment. Wow, we've been waiting so long for these cards to come out. And we saw a few cards start to come out last year. And we had some problems, we could say, in the deployment of those. And we had a lot of jurisdictional changes and all these different things came through. End of the day, we're seeing some cards getting shipped to Singapore. People in Singapore are going to be able to get their hands on these cards. If you live in somewhere like, oh, I don't know, New Zealand, for example, you might be uh, out of luck on this one, at least for the time being, until we do see a maturation of the regulatory scene around these kind of cards. It will come eventually. But if you're in Singapore, great news. If you're other elsewhere, meh. The Elastos TV box. Currently, they have 230,000 consumer-owned units. Now, a lot of these installed boxes come from companies you may have no idea who they are, like Diomate or Mango or Ling Yun or Tasu. But nevertheless, this is big, and they are well on their way to the 1 million active carrier nodes. Just imagine the security of that network. And just think all of these people out there watching TV, but helping secure the network. I never thought TV would be useful for anything. But here we are. I guess we get surprised every day. Venezuela mandates passport fees must be paid in the controversial cryptocurrency, the Petro. Venezuela is trying very, very hard at the moment to make the Petro relevant to make people actually use it. And unfortunately, it's going to cost two Petro to get a passport now in Venezuela. That is four times the average monthly wage currently in Venezuela. So you see what's happening here. It's again, another way to um, entrap your people almost. But considering how expensive that will be for the normal Venezuela, and I don't think there's gonna be some massive rush to go out and get passports and be paying in the Petro. So it's not like we're going to have this overnight surge of people using the Petro to pay for passports. It's more unfortunate than anything, to be honest. And the final story of the day, U.S. border officials can now check Canadians' credit card history and ban you, yes, ban you, for legal marijuana purchases. Just imagine that. Let's say you're from Vancouver, you go down to California, you're smoking some weed, you're having a good time. You go back, they say, hey, can I check your credit card there, son? Take your credit card, give it a little scan. Ah, see so you've been smoking the weed down there in California. You're not gonna be welcome back in the United States anymore. Think about the absurdity of that. It's legal in California, but the federal law, they're actually going to be prohibiting people from re-entering the country if they, of course, can see on your credit card history that you have purchased cannabis products. 
Of course, the solution here, don't use your credit card. If you want to go buy some weed in America, even if it is legal in places like California, use cash. Or if only there was this like censorship resistant, permissionless global money. Oh, Bitcoin, right. Yeah, you could use Bitcoin too, but I don't know how many of these companies are actually going to be accepting Bitcoin at this time. I know there has been some pushes by companies like Metal to get these companies accepting cryptocurrencies. How many of them are actually accepting crypto? Probably not a huge amount of them. They're having their own struggles just trying to get bank accounts where they can store their cash that they take in. And this is just another unnecessary legal headache for these cannabis companies. The sooner that we see the full legalization across, obviously, the entire United States, but hopefully someday across the world. That would be awesome too. But definitely across the United States because you have all these conflicting rules. It would be great to see legal cannabis and preferably legal cannabis that you can buy with Bitcoin. I love my subscribers. Seriously, you guys are awesome. So thank you so much for watching today's episode. Let me know what you think about any of the news stories down below in the comment section. Thumbs up the video. Hit the bell to stay up to date with all of the latest in the crypto space. If you're not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel. Long live the blockchain. And peace out till next time.